All right, we are now at 309, so I'm going to go ahead and start on our agenda. Um, so last week's discussion, we, I mean, last meeting, we discussed changing the name to be more inclusive for our events. Um, Sean did a poll, and I believe the winner was Connect. Am I correct on that? Okay. The, that's, yeah, I mean, you know, we don't, the, the poll was uh, gathering community input, and we don't have to go with the top thing on there, but Connect was a pretty clear winner. And um, technically, we haven't announced yet, so if the board wants to object, but I've just been going forward with Connect. We can do thumbs up in the reactions as a quick vote. For me, plus one, connect is good. Okay. Thomas is a plus. I think Mike said he was good. Pat, Josh, you good? Absolutely. Okay. All right. And we've already kind of started talking with Fosdom about being that as well. Interesting. I can't get rid of my thumbs up. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to have a permanent thumbs up at least for a little while. Um, so again, follow up to some of the face-to-face -face action items, the improving onboarding docs for new contributors and projects. I had the action item to create a board issue for that. And I did, I've listed below under new issues, number 88, improve onboarding documentation for new contributors and projects. Um, there's no comments or updates in that ticket yet, but we do have somewhere to start um, document talks and documenting there um who who's going to take the lead on that one i thought sean was he's talked about redoing the onboarding docs i might be wrong um yeah i can but it's um not going to happen tomorrow if, if it's me no, I, uh, I, uh, I wasn't asking because I thought we needed a timeline. I was just asking because we have an issue now, which is cool. But if we have a person leading it, we should assign it to them. Okay. Unassigned tickets don't tend to get worked on. Right. Sean, you good with it or would you like yeah, to? Yeah, I can take it. I can take else? it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to help once we have some structure in place. Uh, if we need like help filling in specific documentation, I'm happy to help write it up. And we'll probably take you up on that. Um, we'll go into it in a little bit about the China SIG, but we also talked a little bit about ongoing documentations when we had some meetings on that, just with the folks involved there. Um, We'll come back to that in a little bit. SIGIN governance cleanup. Um, is that me? So I, uh, yeah. I saw some tickets I, I go by for that today. Really? So I was going to post a basically an issue for each um, for each SIG for the board to review. And then I was basically pulling together data uh, about each SIG, which I um, I basically have done. So I can I can file those issues with the data that I've put together. Um, I, I kind of yak shaved it and was doing my audits of the SIG meetings and making sure those are happening. Um, I would, that was part of it was to figure out how active they are if their meeting data is current. So. I'll file those issues for each SIG with the data that I have at least. Okay, Pat, I know you were a vision statement. Yep. I've had a um, couple reviews and revisions on that. Yeah, and I, I'm very pleased with the discussion that we've had so far and hopefully that will continue as we try to come up with something. Okay. Uh, I like the latest iteration. I mean, I think it's really good. Okay. And I was going to just ask, do we want to put a deadline on feedback for that just so we don't keep the issue open forever? 
I, yes. I'd like to have something to present to the community in like January because we're realistically December doesn't exist as a month because people are out and the people who are not out are covering for the people who are out. Okay. I really exactly. like the document as well. I didn't. I didn't uh, have time to to put a plus one like uh, written, but uh, it's really nice. Uh, thanks for the work. Sorry, the the last version is the one with the latest comment there, right? Yes. Yeah, if there are. Yeah, that looks great to me as well. Yeah, things to tweak, things to make friendlier or less grumpy, or it should feel like a thing that we believe. And if you're not sure you believe it, then we need to fiddle with it. I'm gonna, because this is me typing, Thomas, sorry. Um, say comments and discussions to be added to the ticket by the end of November just in case there's any revisions they can be done in December so you can even if we need to do something beginning of January we can still get it out in January if that sounds good that sounds great to me all righty um the next item was mascot discussions I don't think we went anywhere we kind of said that was a low priority I just wanted to bring that up. Um, and then logo use. Um, action item was to talk to Fedora. Sean, were you able to? Hi, kitty. Yeah, if you're gonna be a pest, you get to come up. Mascot is now a pet's cat. Okay. <laughs> I uh, think we would appreciate it. <laughs> Um, no, but Matthew Matthew Miller is working on a uh, basically setting up a commented up version of the the Fedora trademark guidelines uh, to legal to try to revamp them, and I want to get in on that. And um, um, so, I, so I've not contacted any. I don't. I agree with. Um, you know, Mike, that that uh, like doing all these one offs of uh, like, oh, you can break these guidelines is just not what we ought to be doing and that we ought to have guidelines that reflect what we want to do. Um, and so um, basically, I'm looking at using fedoras, but it's going to have to come, I guess, before the board um, and see if there's anything that we actually want to be different from there. Besides CentOS and Fedora. Besides CentOS. And then, I mean, there'll be stuff that's different because they refer to certain secondary logos like the, you know, the Fedora remix or something. Those are secondary trademarks they have. So obviously we won't have those. Maybe we have our own stuff to put in there. But, you know, the actual usage guidelines and having a guideline on being able to uh, use the logo in places like, you know, hosting providers showing that CentOS images are a thing they provide. Um, so... But I, I don't have um, a thing to present to the board on that today. Okay. All right. We'll keep I this. I think there's uh, a few of the issues that are open that are related to that. So. Okay. Um, were you able to reach out to one on one or ARM? No, I haven't. The one on one is is one one. Eins und eins, I guess is. I mean, that's one of those one off special things, and I. Um, okay. And you want me to reach out and say, look, we're working on something, but I don't have something for you today, just so they. Okay. And also, what are you meaning by partner? Right. They were the ones who wanted to say partner. Yeah. And, yeah, that's and ARM was kind of a short turn turnaround time. So even when we talk to them, their use is going to be passed. But if they want to use it in the future, we'll at least get that worked out. Um, thank you, Michael, for responding to the Cloud MTS folks. Um, I think those are all the logo use requests we've had in lately. Um, all right, so moving on to issues, if no one else has anything for ongoing discussion, anything I left off the agenda for that? Okay. 
Um, number 86, proposal for the CentOS China SIG. As I mentioned previously, we did meet with those individuals and they have agreed to become part of the promo SIG um, as we had suggested, which I think will also allow us to grow if we have any other requests like this in the future. Um, so we'll close that out. Um, and we did have, you know, they're willing to help um, with some onboarding documentation. So that'll be good because as we onboard them, that helps us to document the process of onboarding them. Um, so that will go well. And they also know that the difference is with open source, individuals are contributors, not groups. So as the onboard as individuals, as well as SIG members, we can document that as well and get that drafted up for the new documentation. So all good things there. Um, as I already mentioned, the improved onboarding documentation, we already discussed assigning that to Sean. Um, number 89, public integration testing for stream. That was a new one that snuck in a week ago from Alexi. Actually, it's not really snuck in. That's the one that Alexandra has been discussing about testing, going back and forth. Um, if anyone has anything yeah, I, on that. Uh, I, I know the folks that filed it because they asked me off, like, by the way, how does this work? It's like, file a ticket and we can try and get our docs more sorted so that it's clearer what we can expose and how it's exposed and what we're planning to expose. And so. I, I have a, I guess, a question on this one. Um, I read Alexandra's comments, which were great. We have mechanisms to provide third-party CI via Zool. It was unclear to me what there was left for the board to discuss on this one. Yeah, it like, kind of left off with do. her comments. Oh, and Alexei did give a heart. So I'm just going to add a quick comment. See if I can tag Alexei. Yeah, all the stuff in these issues seems great to me. I think in general, I would like us to be supportive of this kind of efforts. I'm, I agree. I'm not sure what we need specifically to do here. Oh, Alex wants to speak. Go ahead, Alex. Hi. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. yes. So I'm uh, Alex Baron from CERN. I'm the person that filed this ticket and oh, spoke a about this. Yeah. So I figured I'd connect in case there were some questions. I see it was a good idea. Yeah, I was just going to ask in the ticket, is there anything else you require from us? Yeah, I, th uh, I think there is. So um, basically what, what we wanted to know is how um, testing is going to be done. So integration testing is going to be done for stream. And by this, I mean like for all of the packages or the entire Compose, things like this, not just for particular packages. So what Alexandra, what, uh, Alexandra mentioned in her reply was basically how the testing is going to work per package. But the bit that is missing is something for all of the packages or for the entire Compose. So this is something that I think uh, she says at the end that she agrees that this request is valid, is valid for the board. Okay. I uh, do know I mean, that Zool is capable of doing that. We do that in OpenStack. So, um, it, oh, go ahead, Josh. I was just going to say, like, I, I think the question is fine. I don't know that the board is the group that needs to answer it, though. So who would answer the question? And more importantly, who would implement something? Uh, the who would implement something is an interesting question. Um, who would answer it? I would imagine... It would either be the CPE team or the infrastructure team or a combination thereof, because they're the ones that are actually producing the composes. Brian, I don't, I mean, I, I don't want you to speak for them if you don't feel like it, but do you have thoughts? Yeah, I can give, um, I can give a little bit of background here. And uh, because, so the, uh, the initial plan, if you go, if you back up, like, you know, call it uh, 12 months or so, um, the initial plan was to basically replicate what we have uh, inside Red Hat for rel gating and just do that in the public space and have similar methods for, for testing the composes and stuff. And that turned out to be, um, especially given some 
uh, just some recent uh, shuffles around in the CPE team uh, that turned out to be something that we really couldn't support as the infra team. And so we're looking at Zool as one of the execution runners for that integration testing for uh, for Stream 9. In the meantime, we've got a couple of other things that are going to be tacked onto the end of the Compose generation jobs. It won't be like a full uh, run necessarily, but we're, we're sort of getting closer. Um, and uh, I say all that to, to just say like this, uh, things like this and, uh, you know, a couple of these other tickets that we have in mind, uh, we're, we're having to reprioritize quite a bit based on the uh, the workload and the remit of the infra team. And so we're trying to sort that out amongst ourselves uh, as this stuff comes in. So I think the, the infra team is going to provide some infrastructure uh, to the, the folks that manage the Zool instance for um, the package level testing and, and things like that. But we're still negotiating with uh, how that's all going to work between the, uh, the sort of uh, two groups of people that are working out in the community. So. Are there, things, uh, are there things that we can do to make this easier for people within the community to participate and potentially help take some of the load that was placed on the CPE team? Uh, I mean, so the, like the other option too is, uh, like one of the things that we're encouraging folks to do at their own sites is to build up their own testing regimens. Uh, even if, you know, you can't necessarily connect them up with, uh, with like a third party CI or a voting mechanism or something like that. We are encouraging people to build up their own uh, 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 test plans at their own sites for things like that. And that's, that's good uh, uh, pieces of work to do uh, while we're looking at this. I think the, the next step is probably to look at what the, um, what is the communication mechanism look like once we have those results at the individual sites that people have. Yeah. So for what is worth, we do have, that's what we do internally at Meta, uh, where we, when we consume snapshots, we, we have testing to make sure they're not going to break the world. Uh, and I expect other sites might have similar things, but I think we should try to strive to have some kind of solution in place that doesn't require everybody setting up their own testing infra. Um, so I think if we can come up with some kind of like common infrastructure that even if we don't have all the tests developed ourselves. If we can have a way for people to contribute testing, for example, I think that could yeah. be that and there. So I think the, the other part of this too is like 90, per, uh, I, I won't give percentages either, um, but uh, a lot of what we have traditionally called integration testing is actually really uh, package level testing that could go into that, um, that package level testing that ex is, exists already. It doesn't necessarily uh, gate the compose from going to the mirrors, but it catches issues with packages as they're integrated into the rest of the package set. And so that's, that's another thing, like, don't think of the package level testing as sort of insular to one package. It's not necessarily just unit tests for that individual package. We can expand to include, uh, tests that were traditionally part of T functional in, uh, those, um, uh, th those other tests. And that'll help with, uh, even, you know, further down the line when we get to push composers to the mirrors, that'll help with that problem too. I, I don't, I don't mean to curtail productive conversation, but this sounds like implementation details that should probably be taken to the InfraSig or, or another place where they can actually be more productive than the board meeting. Like, I don't know what the board has to do with this ticket at this point. I mean, I guess one role the board can play is saying we, we want this, we think this is important. Our, we don't think this is important. I think that is something the board can say, like take a position on it. Um, but also both Thomas and Alex had their hand up for a while. So we, I'd like yeah. them to speak. Just one quick comment. I think for, for us, uh, what I see we can do is if Zool is the solution we are looking at, maybe just tell people that, look, Zool will be what we want to do testing with and people can start to build uh, their process around it and like uh, give a direction while we don't have nothing, but people could know what to do and start to work uh, on a similar solution and then integrate their test um, in an easier way. Maybe this is what we can bring to the party. I don't know. And Alex, you've had your hand up. I don't know if it's ever gone yeah. down. Are you having yeah, 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 something else? Yeah, well, no, it's basically the same thing. So I wanted to say that I'm glad to hear David basically saying what uh, I've been saying in the ticket. 
So we also do our own testing internally at CERN. Uh, a lot of it is relatively simple. It's just uh, making sure packages can be installed um, um, and that all the dependencies are met and these sort of things. But I, we don't think it makes sense for us to have to do it and Meta have to do it and everybody else to do it. So what we want is to have some place where we can push these tests so they're run before the packages get out to the mirrors so that it saves work, work for everybody. We're more than happy to contribute the tests that we have now. We just want some kind of idea of where we can contribute this stuff and, and how we can work with the rest of the community. It does sound like reaching out to Infra might be the first step. If not Infra, then CPE, but I'd start with Infra. Um, so I, ha I have talked to Infra uh, in the past, or at least parts of Infra. And this is where I got the, or part of the place where I got the suggestion to ask the board and, and see if there was more of a, a prioritization of this uh, sort of effort. I mean, I don't, I don't think the board actually has the authority to do that, right? Which is why I, I'm trying to be respectful, but insistent that like this isn't, there's, Davide, even if we were to say this is something the board thinks is high priority, nothing changes. Like it is important, I agree. But if the prioritization and the resources all have to come from CPE and the infrastructure SIG, it seems like that's the place where it needs to get sorted out. Oh, I agree. I think, yeah. I think what we can do, however, is if, if we believe this is important, what we should probably do is work together with CPE. Are there things that we can do as a community to make this easier? And yeah, that's make, a good make, to make this easier to make it easier for people that aren't CP to do work on it. And I mean, this doesn't apply just to this issue specifically. There's a few things that I think could benefit from this kind of discussion in general. Um, but I agree yeah. that these are conversations where with the CP team, not necessarily in this venue. And, and like, I mean, Alex, just just to be clear, I'm not picking on your specific issue. This is a, a trend that I've seen over a, a few issues that we've had uh, where people don't get the answer or the time frame they want and then they bring them to the board and the board effectively has nothing they can do to make it better on a time frame that makes people happy. And so I want to make sure we're not artificially escalating with the expectation that the board can actually do anything uh, about that particular kind of issue. So um, personally, yes, I think this is an important thing that we should be looking at. It sounds like there's discussions and plans to have it in place and we should we should really focus where they are going to be the most productive. Focus yeah, we can say we think it's a good idea, but we're not going to get you the resources to get it done. Yeah. So if, what, if you're looking for the board support of saying it's a good idea, I think it's obvious you have that. And then you can take that back to InfraSig and say, okay, I've got general support from the community through the board. What can I do to help you? And I think that's the best approach to take to this. Um, and even put something on the mailing list. Um, hey, this is something we're looking to do. We'd like to help lead the effort. Who else would like to be involved? Because the more people you do have working on the different testing, the faster it will get done. Yeah, I would say having a public discussion somewhere of this, I think would be useful of these and other things. I think there's a lot of project conversation we end up having as like one-offs on IRC that could probably benefit from happening on the list or in a ticket somewhere, uh, both so more people can participate and so they're more visible. So in terms of uh, next steps now, are, are, is somebody going to reply to this ticket or what's going to happen next? So the, like, we have, um, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of, of sort of look behind the, uh, the calendar that we have. Um, the InfraSig has three meetings. First one is starting next week uh, with some of the folks who run Zool Infrastructure. And that's, that's one of the first actions that we're taking as, as a group to, uh, to sort of figure out what, like, who's going to take which part of, of this particular problem. And so like, I wouldn't expect much of anything before uh, next week or the week after, uh, depending on if that stuff gets moved. Uh, but this will show up at uh, a subsequent infra meeting and we'll, we'll make sure that that gets on the appropriate agenda for the, the public uh, infra meeting. 
that follows whatever whatever comes out of this uh, uh, meet and greet with the Zool folks. Okay, thank you. And Brian, do you need any assistance making connections with the Zool folks? Because that's open dev, which I'm involved in. Uh, no, we've got uh, we've got all of those folks on the invite, so I think okay. we're we're all set. All right. And Alex, we'll put some comments in the ticket related to the notes that Thomas has been taking as we've been having this discussion. Um, Thank you very much. You're welcome. All righty. Ongoing issues number 67, trusting the SIGs secure boot. Do we have any updates on that? This would be another one where I would ask, what is left for the board to do here other than ask for updates, which are probably coming from the InfraSig? Like we've already said, it's it's a good idea. It's It's been prioritized as far as I know, and they've gone down the road of purchasing hardware. So what is left for the board to do? Like, what is the action that we're waiting on? I think it's more that we haven't closed it or anything. Therefore, we bring it up every meeting to see if there's any updates. To be well, yeah. the, the issue also asked for a specific question and I don't know if we actually answered, which was what is the official CentOS project board position on the SIGs and how far should they be trusted? Um, I, if I, this has been around for a while. I think that led to the discussion of which of various options we could use for the securable design, which we, we settled on one. Uh, did we ever summarize that whole thing besides the meeting minions? I mean, the last comment on this was 11 months ago. Yeah, so that's why, because I remember there was definitely discussion on this, both both during these meetings and offline and in various other venues. Um, it might be worth to summarize where we're at in there and like what the next steps are, where is the discussion progressing. And once that's done, I think it's fair to close it at that point, but I don't think we got closure on this just yet. Okay, so and, and that's fine. Like, I just wanted to identify what the action actually was because, like Amy said, we have just we keep bringing it up and we keep hearing updates from Brian on where hardware is, but that's that seems good, but kind of non-productive from the board standpoint. So, so if uh, um, in the um, in the discussions that we've had about this before, I think the um, the the policy that we were working under the um, uh, sort of the plan of record was uh, to basically say that the the SIG sub keys uh, were basically controlled or accessible to SIG chairs or a delegate for each SIG that wants to build a kernel uh, and so that's something that the board could ratify as a as sort of a policy position if you want to write something down and say that, you know, that's the, uh, that's the default policy, but that's the assumption that we're under technically is that uh, it, either the SIG chairs or uh, a specific delegate designated by the SIG chairs would have access to that uh, sub key that's shared amongst the, uh, the SIGs and that's separate from the, the distro key, obviously. Uh, I think the other side of this was that the, if I remember right, the discussion was that all these sub keys would go up to one key and we, sh we had to figure out how to get that key trusted by Shim. So this would uh, actually be useful. No, so the, uh, in, like in the, in the past few months, uh, we, we gained the ability to include two roots of trust into the Shim binary itself. And so we would include the root of trust for the distro and also include the root of trust for the special interest groups and sign a, sh a single shim binary. Oh, that's excellent. Okay, thank you. That's, that's amazing. When did yeah, that, that, that address is my concern then. That's great. That's, that was one of the things that we were waiting for. Um, it, it happened a few months ago, uh, like uh, maybe two, three months ago. Brian, can I ask you to put that in a comment in the ticket? Uh, yep, yeah, I sure can. And we'll also get Davida, are you the best person to do that summarization? Uh, I can try to do that. Uh, okay. I, I want to dig up first the minions from where we discussed the last time, so I don't misrepresent what we actually agreed to the last time. Yeah. And what we can always do is some of these older issues, 
that this is where we're at. If there's nothing that we do feel we can do anymore, you know, make comments on the tickets and maybe give like a two week notice in there because anyone who's added comments to the ticket are gonna get an email. And if we don't have any updates or continued questions after two, two weeks, then we can close these things out versus bringing them up every time. Um, some of them we can work on, some of them we can't. Um, but it doesn't seem like besides supporting this, we actually have anything we can do on this. Um, moving on to 79 recording historical SIG memberships. Last I remember this kind of was a GRDP issue. If we have to allow people to have the ability to say they don't want to be listed on there. Yeah. Um, is a piece of it is we want to make sure that uh, our community members who retire still get the recognition they deserve. But if they don't want that recognition, we want them to be able to not get it. But what is the, do we have a proposal for the process of, I don't know the thing, where, how, how this, how the membership would be recorded? Um, this link into here. number one is the best option. Mike, I think your microphone is very loud. Oh. <laughs> Sounds like you have a fan going. Um, so Infra suggested three solutions. We felt that number one is central version. Daily basic check in to get repo can be reviewed over time. Hopefully, we use a stop gap if the complex solution is required. Um, but we had the comment back, which I don't know if it should have gotten to, back to us or not. But how do we deal with GDPR issues? So, um, yeah, that feels like it falls down to the implementation. Um, I think the, as Josh mentioned, I think from the board perspective, we're done with this. Um, we've said, yeah, that's a thing we want and we can let in for a figure out how they're willing to support it. Yeah, I mean, it, it just comes down to if there's a takedown request, then we have to comply unless there's extenuating reasons not to. So as long as their system can do that. I, I'm, not, I'm not convinced this is a GDPR situation, but I'm not a lawyer. I just think if we're reporting facts about history of the project on our webpage, then, then that is more similar to a published article on the internet than it is a user account with personal identifying information. Uh, I can't GDPR for the New York Times to, to edit my name out of an article that they wrote about me and I don't see why I would be able to uh, hide my history of involvement with a public project either. I mean, that said, I'm perfectly happy to remove people's names from our, from our website if they don't want to be there. I'm just not going to think it's a GDPR issue, but I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. Uh, I know that there are exceptions such as, um, for example, removing somebody's uh, name and email address from the history of a Git repository is just not possible without rewriting the Git repository and then validating everybody's, uh, like it's just, it can't be done. And that I've been told is not something that has to be done. Well, uh, but it's also a historical fact, N neither can somebody email me and demand that I delete all the emails that they have sent to me over time just because. Right. So. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's more, I mean, if somebody does, if we make a historical page that can be updated, if someone does not want their name associated, I think we should have, have the ability to respect that wish that they don't want to be listed there. And I think that's the GD, GDPR issue here. We're not going to go through Git. We can't go through Git. No. Nope. Get rid of every we probably can't remove everything from Nomad archives either. I mean, I think realistically we can make this up best effort kind of thing where like 
if someone asks not to be mentioned, I think it's easy yeah. enough to respect that by, by removing their name from a web page with the understanding right. that we're not going to say scrap the mailing list of previous posts they made like that, that there's obvious limitations there. So yeah. um, I don't know if we can encode these in a policy in a way that is meaningful, but I think that's kind of the spirit of what we will probably strive for. And then if, if we end up actually having a case like that, that, is tricky to handle. We can we can discuss it, um, but I, I would caution against trying to write a thing that covers all possible corner cases before we have even an example of something. Yeah, so I think it comes down to should someone ask not to be included on the historical page, we will remove them, um, but we're not going to touch the mailing lists, Git or anything else. That's historical like that. Um, so if we are all in agreement, I have a comment on this, that this issue is being tracked and worked on by Infra as noted, because they're the ones who, actually that was Pat, I think, who put the link to their issue. If there is nothing else needed by the board, we will close this issue out on 11-23, which is two weeks. And I think we can use similar in notation on anything we want to kind of give that two week notice to. Is everyone good with that comment? And I'll set a reminder in two weeks to close this. Going once, going twice, comment made. All right, let me bring the agenda back up. All right, um, number 82, clarifications and open questions concerning the possibility of SIGs creating content for RHEL. Number 82. I'll keep 79 open so I don't forget. All right. Um, this was open three months ago. Pat, it looks like you took this as an action item. Yes. Uh, had a proposal for how to possibly look at retiring the content from the build system. Uh, the KMOD SIG didn't disagree with it. And we were going to wait as I last time I posted it like before the meeting before the meeting uh, minutes and so there just wasn't time to read it and then life happened but theoretically if what I've got there in the second to last comment looks reasonable we can pass that off to infra and see if they're okay with it as a way of tracking the life cycle of the builds for the SIGs Uh, is there anybody objecting to, to the proposal on this ticket? Because otherwise, uh, it's the same. I think at the board level, we are done. Yeah, I'm not aware of any objections, but before sort of passing it off and saying, as the board, we were kind of thinking X. I wanted to make sure that as the board, we had a chance to think about X. Has everyone had a chance to read this? Sorry, this is yeah, 82? 82. I'll put the link in the chat. I I want to make sure that there wasn't an action item for Bex to make sure that the rel content itself and the build routes would still be available for that extra time. For some reason, I thought that was a, an open question, but maybe it's not. I think that's why we had ended up with discussions with Apple. Yeah. If there is an action item for me in that it was not actioned to me, I'm happy to take an action item if one is required, but um, uh, Mr. Boyer, Mr. Stinson, you know that this action item will bounce back into a meeting that involves you two. Uh, so yeah, please fine. be aware. <laughs> no, so but that, I'm not taking it yet because it sounds like Apple may know the answer. I, I, I think I remember some of the context here is um, like one of the, um, one of the unicorns and rainbows scenario was that uh, we would be able to provide uh, rel bits past the production support phases, and uh, that's not something that we 
that we can provide from an infra perspective, but I think we can provide bits for the releases that are in the production phase. That's that's my understanding of how that conversation went, uh, but we can clarify that that's the plan of record. Okay, so why don't we have an action item for everyone to look at this issue in the next seven days, make any comments, concerns, and if there are no comments and concerns either to the mailing list or on this comment, then Pat will move forward with talking to the k -Monsig. Does that sound good to everyone? Uh, yeah. k is already looped in. Okay. Yeah, they're here. Um, Brian, I think that I think the request was not make maintenance phase rel available in the build routes. It was please don't delete the last uh, full support release. So, like for example, when rel eight ten is shipped, we'll put that in the CBS build route. They're not expecting further updates that go into that. They're just they want it to stay fixed for thirty days after that GA date is essentially what the request is. And I. I don't see why there's a problem with that part. Yeah, that part we don't have a have trouble with either. Um, okay. I know that for sure. Okay, so let's give everyone a week to read this because it doesn't sound like anyone actually read it, or at least if there's any comments on anything that's been said, rewording, et cetera. Um, I want to assign it to somebody. Who should we assign it to? Um, well, Pat's already kind of assigned to it, I thought. Oop, don't. We'll give it to Pat. Okay. We'll give it to Pat. Jeez, look. I always look for Pat. That's not Pat. There we go. Assigned to Pat. So, Pat, if you don't get any feedback for any changes in a week, Go forth. Yeah, I do. Um, all right. We've already discussed the vision statement. We have our two usual on issues on hold, getting official sent to us images into Azure. Um, I thought there was progress on that, though. And then CentOS Stream 9 in WSL. Does anyone have anything on either of those? Uh, I would, um, hmm. I, shot, I thought the Azure one was somebody was going to look into. Uh, that was uh, AWS. Oh, OK, never mind then. Weren't these two still blocked on legal stuff? Yes. So being candid, uh, there are discussions about uh, CentOS images in Azure. Brian is far more aware of the details there, but there's probably not anything we can share right at the moment. Okay. WSL is still very much a legal no-go. Um, and so we can, we can continue to have the issue on hold in the board, uh, but I don't think it's worth bringing up every month at the meeting. Okay. So should anyone have an update, um, go into the agenda, which I tried to have updated a day or two before. And I'll kind of like I did yesterday, I'll update the board when I've got it updated. And if you have anything to add into it, let's move it into the ongoing issues. How's that sound? Yeah. Okay. So that brings us to community architect update. Sean, the floor is yours. Okay. Um, so first of all, the, the connect, the rebranded dojo, uh, will happen on February 3rd, the day before, uh, FOSDEM. Um, and barring, I don't know what it'll happen at the devil tree, which I, I believe I linked in the thing. Um, the, the, the hotel contract has to go through a legal review process at Red Hat, which is, um, frustrating me. Uh, but uh, so basically I'm, I'm waiting on the contract to pass that, um, that process so I can sign it and actually officially announce. So um, I did put a say the date out on Twitter and just, if you know people who are going to pause them, like let them like plan on, uh, you know, coming a day early for that. Um, I know it's getting to the point people are booking the travel and I really wanted to announce, um, I will announce it like the 
day I signed that contract, but I'm in a holding pattern on that. Um, so it definitely saves the day on that. Um, in, in the meantime, I'm working on uh, promotional stuff for it, uh, imagery. Uh, earlier in the stream office hours, the V-Day suggested that this might be the opportunity to have just a nice website for uh, Connect instead of the wiki as a kind of first step of moving stuff off the wiki. So um, I'm looking at that. Um, there is a distros dev room. The uh, organizers for that are, are me, uh, Vipul, and Justin, uh, who are Fedora people, and we'll be reaching out to, of course, lots of other distros, OpenSUSE and Ubuntu and all of those people. So um, that is on the Sunday. It's the second day of Fosdem. So um, I don't know, block your calendar to sit in the distros dev room uh, working on the CFP. So if you have, you know, it's like, also think about things you might want to present at Connect, but you know, let's get our message out in the distros dev room where we have a wider audience um, as well. So think about if you want to present something there or if you know people who do. And should we get more than a day's worth of proposals, if there's any that we think that are broader, maybe we ask those people if they could present on Sunday instead? Yeah, yeah. Uh, although, you know, the Sunday will be maybe the, the tighter schedule because we have to, like, I I can't just make it an all set to us day, but. Um, oh, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, definitely think about both. And some people may not be planning on staying till Sunday either. So, you know, if we can always work with people's schedule, if we end up with more than. Sure. We can hold on one day. Sure. Um, I, I think I offered on the mailing list and it sounds like there's not a lot of interest, but um, you know, if the board or any SIGs want to have uh, any sort of meetings, uh, even just half day meetings or shorter meetings, um, you know, I can um, try to put space together for that, but it, it sounds like uh, it's probably not the case. Um, I'm considering maybe a probably a one day like web and docs hack fest if I can get people together, if there's interest of people other than me um, it would have to be, for me, it would have to be the day after Fosdem. There's just no way I can, um, like, do the, run the connect and also, you know, do that. So Okay, so you're um, thinking about being on Monday versus being a on Monday. Okay. Yeah, being on Monday and getting, like, a, uh, you know, a little boardroom in a hotel with some people together who are interested in our web stuff, which needs a revamp, our docs, which need a revamp. Um, we're not going to revamp it all in a single day, but you sit some people in a room and you might get some strategy and some action items to take home. So if there's interest from people other than me, I don't need to sit in a boardroom by myself. Um, no, I mean, so, if, if we have one, I'd be willing to participate in it. Cool. Yeah, I need uh, more awesome. of these and I'm, I'm happy to participate. Okay. Awesome, then I will look into doing it then. Yeah, because uh, that's another thing that if we are gonna do it as soon as letting people know as soon as possible to make arrangements to be there the extra day and so on and so yeah. forth. All right. Yeah, another yeah, thing that could be interesting to discuss in person is like contribution avenues and missing documentation around that stuff. That's another yeah. thing that I think could be valuable to discuss as part of this. Cool. All right, so I'll send an email, how about this, to Santos Devel. Uh, because that's the widest audience that will have both the save the date for connect, which I realize I didn't do to CentOS Devel yet. I did on Twitter. Uh, so save the date on that and a uh, let me know if you're interested in a uh, on a Monday uh, hack fest for this stuff. So great, that's not just me then. Um, working on a contributors dinner, we discussed this on the mailing list. Um, you know, nothing is set on this. We have kind of two possible venues, the one that I had sent to the mailing list, and then there's the place that, that Fedora has typically used, which is Drug Opera right on uh, Grand Place. Um, so we can do our own thing. We can combine with Fedora. We can do Friday night, which will conflict with the beer event, uh, which I don't care about, or we can do Saturday night, which will conflict with, I don't know how many other receptions, but... Um, you know, I'm perfectly fine thing. with skipping beer event. Yeah. <laughs> Likewise, this, yeah. unfortunately, this does not seem to be compatible with the COVID situation. So I'm I'm yeah. also down for doing something that is not the beer event that night. Well, it's actually not. It can be nice to uh, be on top on top of that 
because then uh, people have other options. We, we, we don't, we people that can't go. You don't have to go to beer event. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and the other thing is, if you really want to go to beer event, you can go later. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. beer event lasts long. Yeah. <laughs> have dinner and then go. Uh, so, um, so Fedora has, has, as I said, typically done the drug opera and they've done Saturday. Um, so I don't, it's up to you all if, if you want to do, um, if you want to join with them, do a joint thing, we can do our own thing. Um, I can organize it either way. So we can always do our own thing, then join them on Saturday. We could do both. <laughs> Um, I actually kind of like that idea. How about this? Uh, what if we made a contributor's dinner that was a joint thing with Fedora on Saturday um, and on Friday do a smaller dinner that's not like a full 20, 30 person contributor's dinner, but it's like, you know, a board dinner. The only caveat is that, from what I remember, Saturday, fast and weekend is like buying real estate for restaurants. Oh, yeah. So yeah, that that will need some like careful planning to make sure we actually have a spot and everything. But yeah, that seems yeah. reasonable to me. Yeah, to me as well. It's a good proposal, actually. Okay. Yeah, the, the restaurants. I'm gonna well, I'm gonna lean heavily on Fedora if they've been you know doing this thing, uh, but I know they haven't booked it yet and. You know, Justin's very new in the role, the, the FK role. So, um, yeah. So, if we can even reach out to Justin and help him, yep. Um, that would be a good thing. All right. We are at time. Sean, you have one more thing. Oh, I'm just mentioning um, I'm going to the supercomputing conference in Texas uh, next week. Not a big CentOS presence, mostly a Red Hat presence. But if you have messaging that you want, that you think is relevant there, tell me. Where and is supercomputing? Uh, Dallas. Uh, Too far for you? Uh, Carl's hours. coming up, actually. So uh, I'll see Carl. Um, and we, I'll have a booth at Ohio Linux Fest, which is next uh, next month. Um, and they apparently are going to do a distros um, panel and asked me if I would join that. So I guess, I guess I'm doing that. So um, that's just an FYI of what I'll be doing events-wise. Oh, right. and we, we'll probably have a presence of scale in oh, yeah. March. Uh, and the CFP for scale is open. So if anybody's planning to visit and would like to give a talk, that's also an option. OK. Does anyone else have anything they want to add? We are a minute over. OK, then. Thank you, everyone. Again, really good discussions this month. And I'll see everyone at the office hours. Take care, all. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Bye.